On a cold, dark night in October 1967, the small fishing village of Shad Harbor, Nova Scotia, became the site of one of Canada's most enduring and fascinating UFO mysteries. Locals and authorities alike were drawn into a strange series of events that would leave them questioning the very nature of their reality. This is the story of the Shag Harbor Incident. Chapter 1. The Lights in the Sky It all began on the night of October 4, 1967, when several residents of Shag Harbor and the nearby town of Woods Harbor witnessed an unusual sight in the sky. At approximately 11.20 p.m., they observed a formation of bright orange lights moving rapidly across the sky. The witnesses, including a local fisherman named Lori Wickens, described the lights as being arranged in a rectangular pattern and appearing to be attached to a larger, unknown object. The object seemed to be in distress as it moved erratically, dipping and rising in altitude before finally descending towards the waters of Shag Harbor. The witnesses watched in awe as the lights appeared to crash into the ocean, leaving a trail of yellow foam and an eerie silence behind. Chapter 2 The search begins. Fearing that an aircraft had crashed into the sea, Lori Wickens immediately contacted the Royal Canadian Mounted Police RCMP, to report the incident. Within minutes, Corporal Victor Werbeke and Constable Ron Pound arrived at the scene, joining the growing crowd of onlookers who had gathered at the shoreline. To their surprise, they too observed the strange lights, now floating on the surface of the water, approximately half a mile from the shore. The RCMP officers quickly organized a search and rescue effort, enlisting the help of local fishermen and their boats. Despite the darkness and the choppy waters, the rescuers set out to investigate the mysterious lights and search for possible survivors. Chapter 3 the vanishing act. As the boats drew closer to the location of the lights, witnesses on the shore noticed that the orange glow began to fade, eventually disappearing beneath the waves. The search party reached the site, finding only the lingering yellow foam and no trace of the object or any wreckage. The RCMP officers, puzzled by the incident, contacted the Rescue Coordination Center in Halifax, as well as the nearby Canadian Forces Base, CFB Greenwood, to inquire about any missing aircraft. To their astonishment, both agencies reported that no planes were missing and no known aircraft had been in the area at the time of the sighting. Chapter 4. The Investigation The following day, the Canadian military initiated an underwater search operation, hoping to find some clues about the mysterious object. Divers from the HMCS Granby, a Royal Canadian Navy ship, scoured the ocean floor for any signs of wreckage or debris. Meanwhile, the RCMP continued to gather witness testimonies and collect information about the incident. Despite their thorough search, the divers found nothing, and the military called off the operation after three days. In the absence of any physical evidence or explanation, the Shag Harbor incident quickly became the subject of intense speculation and debate among locals and UFO enthusiasts. Chapter 5 The Theories In the years that followed, various theories emerged to explain the strange events of that October night in 1967. Some speculated that the object was a top-secret military aircraft, while others believed that it was a meteor or other natural phenomenon. However, the most popular theory was that the lights were part of an extraterrestrial spacecraft that had crashed landed in the waters of Shag Harbor. This theory gained further traction when it was revealed that, on the same night as the Shag Harbor incident, several UFO sightings had been reported along the eastern seaboard of the United States and Canada. Witnesses in these locations also described seeing strange lights in the sky, and some even claimed to have experienced close encounters with extraterrestrial beings. This led some to believe that the Shag Harbor object was part of a larger, coordinated series of events involving otherworldly visitors. Chapter 6. The Government Files In the years following during the Shag Harbor incident, UFO researchers and enthusiasts sought to uncover any government documentation related to the case. After a protracted legal battle under the Access to Information Act, the Canadian government released several previously classified documents in 1993. The documents confirmed that the government and military had indeed taken the incident seriously, dedicating significant resources to the search and investigation. However, the released files contained no concrete answers or explanations for the strange lights or the object that had vanished beneath the waves. Chapter 7. The Legacy Today, the Shag Harbor incident remains one of the most well-documented and intriguing UFO cases in Canadian history. The lack of a definitive explanation, combined with the numerous witness testimonies and government involvement, has only served to fuel the speculation and interest surrounding the case. The small fishing village of Shag Harbor has embraced its place in UFO lore, with a local museum dedicated to the incident and an annual festival that attracts visitors from around the world. The Shag Harbor incident continues to captivate the imagination of those who seek answers to the enduring question of whether we are alone in the universe. The story of the Shag Harbor incident, with its mysterious lights, 
vanishing objects, and government intrigue remains an unsolved enigma that has captured the attention of UFO enthusiasts and skeptics alike. Despite the passage of time and a lack of conclusive evidence, the events of that October night in 1967 continue to inspire curiosity and wonder. Whether the object was of earthly origin or evidence of extraterrestrial visitation, the Shag Harbor incident serves as a reminder of the vast, unexplored mysteries that lie just beyond our understanding.